Hey there, Staunch Gang. This time we're doing more of a mainstream movie. I don't really talk too much, you know, mainstream stuff on the channel. But in this case, I, I did want to touch on it either way. And there is spoilers, so, you know, spoiler alert, whatever. Be sure to like and subscribe and all that goodness so you can vote for quickie reviews on my community posts. Basically, when it comes to the Evil Dead franchise, I love all of the movies. Uh, except the 2013 remake, I, I did not like that one at all. And I lost interest, you know, in Ash vs. Evil Dead by its last season, so I don't even know how that turned out. But for the, all the comics that I've read and whatnot, I thought they were pretty good. So, when it comes to Evil Dead Rise, yeah, I had a great fucking time. I thought it was a cool-ass movie. A welcome uh, addition to the whole lore and to the franchise. Let's get into it. I'll start off with my pros. I like how dark and dingy everything was, and everything felt really lived in, you know, all the buildings and the rain really added that atmosphere. Pretty cool stuff if you're going to take it out of the woods. I I'm glad that we got this real lived in kind of feel, and overall there was some pretty superb acting and cast when you consider it. I didn't know any of these actors, and the little kids, you know, when I they didn't bother me. Usually child acting, I just don't like, you know, but in this case, I didn't mind it at all. And I liked how there was heavy Demons 2 vibes going on here. I know I'm not the only one that thought that, right? And even, you know, when the earthquake happens and makes the hole in the ground, I couldn't help but think of the gate, especially with the kids standing around and whatnot. Most of all, though, uh, you know, I really did like the world building here with the Evil Dead, especially with the, you know, the confirmation of the three books existing or rumored to have existed. And even the books, you know, looking different in Army of Darkness, well, it makes sense now, right? I mean, there were decoys, yeah, but that also lends to the idea of the books, you know, only being rumors or being so ancient nobody knows what they look like or, or something, you know? It's little things like that that get you thinking where you, you appreciate what you already know even more, you know? It's pretty cool. That's what, that's what these movies should be doing. And of course, one must have for any Evil Dead movie, to me anyways, is the practical effects. And there were a lot of them here, and they were all really on point. Especially the monster in the end. In the perfect blending of, of practical and CG whenever it needed it, you know. Much better than the big bad that we got in the 2013 remake. What the hell was that? I saw a lot of people kind of, you know, complaining about the callbacks that this film has. But I loved it. I really, it really felt like, you know, these, these demons or this evil, whatever, was dormant and waiting to play. Like, a lot of these spirits or whatever felt like the same batch from Evil Dead 2. I mean, with the Dead by Dawn chanting and the eyeball flinging. <laughs> it makes sense, right? Like, th maybe maybe there's a lot of... Maybe maybe we're dealing with some uh, familiar faces here. So, some familiar spirits. Even with the beginning, whenever, um, you know, the girl's in the bed and she's reading the book. And there's no possible way she could be seeing the words. It's a lot like the card game in the, in the original. So that's just a few of my pros. I don't want to, I know I'm spoiling a lot of it, but I kind of want you guys to go check it out. There's a few more things I could talk about there, but pretty much um, I, I, there's a lot that I did like about the film and not much that I didn't like. Let's get to the cons. The earthquake thing that, that kind of kicks off the whole shebang, like there's just, a, there's an earthquake and it, it just happens and there's a hole and it's like the perfect time and there's like you learn that the building's an old bank earlier on and they think it's haunted and i guess it is right i mean it was an old bank and it turns out there's a demonic book down in the safe or whatever that it's just so convenient that that it happened that way i, I upon rewatching, i was like well maybe it was the spirit that did it was the evil you know but no, it just seems to be an earthquake there's a news report later on where they're they're talking about there was an earthquake that went down so I don't know. Um, I, I thought maybe if there was some demonic interference there, it would make sense. But I, it was just an earthquake from what I found. I don't know. Am I wrong about that? And I also thought there was a bit too much like jump scare music. Not even necessarily jump scares. Just like the music thought it was a jump scare, you know. And the scene more often would have played out a lot cooler without the da da or the da da you know, whatever. The, the, the quiet overall tone that I like from these movies, at least, at least, at least like the horror kind of stuff. Like, I guess I'm talking about part one a lot. Part one, you really felt alone out in that cabin and it played on the silence. You don't get a lot of that here. Like, especially whenever Ash would go crazy and they really, as you're talking about playing on silence, they really play with silence there. 
and as far as callbacks, I don't know. I guess I think that the chainsaw thing was a bit much, but if it takes dismemberment or disembowelment or whatever to knock these things down a notch, makes perfect sense to have a chainsaw, right? So can't complain, I guess. Oh, and another big con is I was really hoping to see Ted Raimi pop up somewhere. What the hell? Now, some other thoughts here that are not necessarily pros or cons. Like, yeah, there's three books, right? Which hints at, okay, the, the, the entire universe being tied together. The original run of films, the 2013 film, and this one. That's what they're kind of hinting at there. But, you know, in the first one, it was Necronomicon Ex Mortis. And in 2013 and this film, it was Naturum de Manto. And those books just seem way too different from each other to be the same book. Or maybe it's just one of the rumored three of Naturum de Manto, so they don't even know about Necronomicon Ex Mortis yet? Or is there three versions of the specific Naturum de Manto out there? Is that what they're talking about? It was just, when, like I said, when, when if you're a fan and you get thinking about this stuff, it gets a little strange and I may be overlooking it. I don't know. Again, let me know down there. My idea for a prequel I've always had could be kind of happening here, though. That's pretty cool. Uh, you know, because as you as you know, in the film, there's a part where they're listening to the to the readings from the priest who's reading the book, but it's on a vinyl. And so when the kid's listening to the vinyl, you hear what is confirmed to be Time Traveler Ash, a Bruce Campbell cameo. Like it actually happened. Right. And he's yelling out. It's called the Book of the Dead for a reason. So for some reason, there's a Time Traveler Ash back in the day trying to get this thing stopped, you know, trying to get it, trying to keep it from happening. So I've always thought the original story would be where how, how these books were found, especially with the story surrounding the original film, like the story of the of the excavator guy finding the book and with his wife and going to the cabin and that whole thing, just a straight prequel. And considering we have so many books now, that could be done, maybe in TV form? Who knows? That could be pretty cool to see. I definitely want to see more of Time Traveler Ash, though. One thing I did notice, too, I don't know, again, I might be overlooking this. We get a pretty obvious Shining reference in the film. But another Shining reference I thought I may have found was the design on the door. Anyone else think that? Does that look like the carpet? Or am I just being a stupid dumbass? Like fucking Freddy Prince Jr. Overall, I had an evil good time. Anyways, I just wanted to share my thoughts on Evil Dead Rise since you guys asked me to. I love the Evil Dead franchise, and I don't see this as a negative addition to the lore. And I will for sure be there when the Evil Dead, um, rise again. You can hear me talk about the original Evil Dead with the mighty Sledgehammer Horror, as I was featured on his My First Horror Movie series. Link pinned in comments, linked up there, linked all over the place. Subscribe to Sledgehammer Horror 2 while you're at it. I'm going to start doing more short rants about newer movies and whatnot. You guys can vote, as I said, on my community posts. Hit that notification bell. Leave me a comment. Make sure you're subscribed. And we'll see how it goes. Let me know what other current films you want me to hear rant about down below. Staunch King, don't forget to rewind. Check out Evil Dead Rise.